We've talked about the different sections of the ice, the positions the players play, and the rules that they have to follow, among other things. But I think it's finally time that we start to try to make some sense of all that skating around in circles that they do between goals. Welcome back to NHL 101, and that's right, today we're finally talking about basic strategy and positioning in hockey. As a quick disclaimer, especially at the NHL level, there are all sorts of different strategies, tactics, and plays that different teams run at different times and with different personnel. But we're just going to stick to the basics in this one, which is where most of it is rooted. And we might as well jump right into it, starting off on the defensive end, where, of course, we have the positions that we've already talked about in a previous video, those being the two defensemen, right and left, the two wingers, also right and left, the center, and of course, since we're in the defensive zone, the goalie. At its most basic, the defensive strategy is a simple zone, with the two defensemen in charge of their respective corners, including the area behind the net, and stretching all the way up to somewhere in the middle of the face-off circle, right around the face-off dot. Meanwhile, the two wingers will take the remaining space from there up to the blue line, again on their respective sides of the ice. And the center, you can think of as kind of a rover, who in some cases gets to do basically whatever they want, with the main goal of getting possession of the puck, which often means helping the defensemen along the boards on either side of the ice, though their main area of responsibility is the area directly in front of and even behind the net. Now that we have that down, it's time to introduce the rest of the players, who of course would be the opposing team, without whom defense would be very easy, but they're here to ruin our day, so things are about to get at least a little bit more complicated. And again, at its most basic, with these guys added in, as we'll see when we get to the offensive side, they also have general areas of the ice that they're responsible for, which are going to kind of mirror what the defense is trying to do, which usually means that this will end up looking like kind of a man-on-man -man type of situation, where our defensemen will be on the opposing wingers, and our wingers will be on the opposing defensemen up by the blue line. Though, whether it's a zone or man defense, in the end, I think it probably goes without saying that our main goal on defense is to make sure that the puck doesn't go into the net. And the best way that we can do that is to prevent the opposing team from getting very many chances either in the slot or any high danger areas. And since you are presumably watching this because you're new to hockey, I'll clarify that the slot is the area right in front of the net down the middle which is also the highest danger scoring area that we really, really want to be preventing opposing teams from getting shots off in. Meanwhile, the rest of the high danger scoring area that we'd also like to be preventing shots from is usually seen as kind of a cone going out from the net, or if it's Alexander Ovechkin over in this area. So then, as far as our defense is concerned, who again, their main goal is to, well, prevent a goal from happening, they are first off going to try to prevent as many shots as they can from happening in the first place, but any shots that do happen, they're going to try to keep to that horseshoe shape around the outside of the defensive zone in order to make things a little easier on the goaltenders so they don't have too much of a hard time making the saves. I mean, yes, highlight reel saves are fun to watch, but if you're a defender, you really don't want to be putting your goaltender in too many of those situations. Now, we've already gone over a fair amount here on the defensive end, but we have yet to even introduce a puck, so I think it's time we did that. And, as it often does end up doing in a game situation, we'll put the puck in the corner where our defenseman and the opposing winger are going to fight for it along the boards. And oftentimes, these puck battles, especially if they go on for more than a second or two, will also draw the attention of usually the two centers from either team, as they'll come in to try to help their guy win the fight. Meanwhile, everyone else has to position themselves to be ready for that puck to come out in pretty much any possible direction. And defensively, the worst place that it could end up coming out would be right out into the middle into those high danger scoring areas, which means that our winger and defenseman on the other side are going to want to shade over to the near side of their zone closer to the puck, to take away that slot area that we talked about earlier and make sure that if the puck does come out to that spot, it doesn't find an offensive stick first. Still though, keeping in mind that while the main focus is going to be the puck and making sure you can track it from wherever it ends up popping out, that there still is an opposing player behind them that they want to prevent that puck from getting to. So if it does get past them, that player isn't too wide open to get an easy shot off on goal. 
Though, if the puck does come out of that battle without one of the players having clear possession of it, it's much more likely that it'll come out along the boards in one direction or the other. Either it goes up the boards towards the blue line, or down along behind the net. Our winger then, who's on the side of the ice that the battle over the puck is happening on, might want to shade towards the walls to try to cut the puck off from going straight up the boards to the defenseman on the other team, but he also doesn't want to go right up against the boards, as that would open up the opportunity for that defenseman to go find some open ice and potentially get the puck into the middle where we don't want them taking shots from. So again, that winger's job is to try to cut off a pass up the boards if they can, but primarily to make sure that the puck doesn't get out into open ice where an opposing player could pick it up and get a shot off in one of those dangerous areas. And then finally, the other option from here is that the puck could go down along the boards behind the net where it'll either get cut off behind the net or end up in the opposite corner where our other defenseman and the opposing other winger will try to go for it and get possession of it first. Oftentimes, this can also lead to another puck battle just on the other side of the ice. And if slash when that does happen, at this point we pretty much just have the same situation but mirrored on the other side. So then our defenseman and winger who were more along the boards during that puck battle will move into the middle of the ice to try to defend that slot and high danger area and make sure that none of the opposing guys get open behind them for a potential easy shot in those areas. From here, let's say the puck does get up along the boards and to the opposing defenseman, and that team is able to get set up with clear possession. At this point, still defensively, the goal remains the same, to make sure that the puck and any opposing players who might have it remain as much as possible around the outside and not in the middle of the ice in those high danger areas. And in order to help make sure that that happens, our five players who are playing defense are gonna go a little bit more towards the middle of those zones that we marked earlier, though with the two wingers and two defensemen, they might shade a little bit towards the middle of the ice, again to make sure they're taking away that center area. And as for our defensive center, they're at this point likely to be pretty much man up with the opposing center, who is probably gonna be trying to get in front of the net and screen the goaltender looking for a tip in on a potential shot coming from the blue line or from the sides. And again, our center who's playing defense is gonna be doing what they can to prevent them from doing that, either keeping them away from the net or not allowing them to use their stick to tip a shot in. Our defensemen have a couple of different options of things they can do. They can either try to take away the shooting lane by trying to block shots, or they can try to take away passing options by being a little bit more man up on the opposing wingers. And if our defenseman who's on the side the puck is on does decide to go for that second option of defending the pass, that does open up the center bit a little bit more, so then the defenseman on the other side just has to be aware of that and make sure that their winger doesn't then try to sneak into that area, or that the center doesn't try to take advantage of it. And finally, at the top of the zone with our wingers, the one who's on the defenseman that has the puck for the opposing team is going to drift towards that guy to force him to make a decision to either shoot or pass the puck. And if they do pass it, often along the blue line to the other defenseman on the other side, the winger will then fall back more towards the middle of the ice where they started, and the winger on the other side will then go up to challenge his defenseman who now has the puck. All of this that we've talked about keeps happening in one order or another until eventually either a goal is scored or the defense is successful in getting possession of the puck. And if it is the defense who gets possession, since I've seen people ask about it during games, at this point, especially if it's one of the wingers who gets possession of it, you'll likely see them pass it backwards towards one of their defensemen or circle around behind the net away from any opposing players. The reason that they do this is it makes it much easier to plan a breakout and get things going the other way in a controlled manner. And since we're on the subject, as far as why you might see a player take the puck behind their own net and even potentially stand there for a while, usually one of the defensemen, well, pretty simply it's because that's the safest place for the puck to be as it's very hard for it to somehow accidentally end up in the net from there. Plus, again, it gives that player the entire ice to look at and try to find the best pass to move the puck up the ice and try to get through the neutral zone into the offensive end and get set up on offense. And that is where we'll pick up next time with this video's counterpart in offensive positioning and strategy, as well as some talk about ways to get through the neutral zone and set up in the offensive end. If you have made it to this point, thank you very much for watching. If you did like or enjoy this video, there are buttons for that stuff down below that do help support the channel, so I would appreciate you using them. Otherwise, I'd love to hear any of your thoughts down in the comment section if you think I missed anything or you have any clarifying questions, and I'll do my best to get to every single one of them. 
Otherwise, until next time, stay safe out there and be good to each other.